Hello friends, uh, welcome to the uh, NPTEL course uh, on irrigation and drainage. So I am uh, Damodara Rao Maila Palle. Um, I am an assistant professor in uh, agriculture and food engineering department, IIT Kharagpur. So uh, in this course, the highlights of the course include, so we are going to uh, have two modules, so one on irrigation then uh, other one is on uh, drainage so uh, and then uh, it's going to be 12 weeks course and uh, each week we are going to cover five uh, 30 minute uh, lectures so all together it will be like 60 lectures and uh, also we are going to have uh, tutorials on gate icr and jrf problems at the end of each uh, uh, week so that means the fifth lecture in a week uh, will contain the tutorials. So that will be will be talking about or solving some gate or ICR JRF, uh, I mean problems. So then it it contains assignments uh, to give hands-on you know training to the uh, students, and also the quizzes to update the uh, the course or or the to update the previous week's you know the syllabus or previous week's uh, course content and then uh, online discussion if you have any questions or any queries so we can uh, have like uh, discussion online so then i'm uh, we're going to have two technical assistants uh, to uh, support in this discussion so they are uh, my phd students um, So, what exactly the uh, you know irrigation and drainage? So, if you see in the uh, agricultural fields, so there are two cases you can really see. In the first case is a dry fields, and the other case will be like a wet field containing some water ponded on the surface. So, in case of uh, dry case, so it doesn't mean that the water is not there you know uh, the surface or that definitely there is water within the soil profile. So, that is called the ground water. So, if the ground water is nearer to the surface and the plants are grown in the fields. So, you need not give irrigation to the plants because the plants can extract water from the root zone or, or, or from the water table. Okay. So, uh, since the water table is uh, you know deeper so, we need to give water artificially on the surface, so that the water will penetrate into this uh, soil and available to the plant. Whereas, uh, in other case, so that is uh, in the drainage case, what happens? The fields are ponded with water always. So, in order to grow crops in that particular you know, uh, piece of land, you need to take out the water, excess water from the surface. So, how do you do that? So, you can either you can provide the channels or, or the cut the field on the surface or you can provide some uh, you know the subsurface drainage pipes. So, that the water will penetrate all the way through this and then uh, uh, okay. so, so, that is the major difference between irrigation and drainage. So, the drain in the irrigation case you provide uh, water artificially on the soil surface, whereas in the drainage case you take out the excess water which is ponded on the surface uh, by providing uh, the uh, by providing the trail drains in the surface I mean underground. So, uh, in the both cases, so our objective is to uh, to give suitable you know environment to the plants to grow. So, that is the I mean uh, the major goal in both irrigation and drainage. So, the learning outcome in this uh, the course includes uh, the to understand irrigation and drainage prop principles. So, this is important to understand or to design an irrigation or drainage system and to design a gravity and pressurized irrigation systems. So, if you are talking about irrigation, so it will be the surface irrigation where you provide water on the surface uh, by gravity force I and mean, you need not use any pump to pump the water. 
whereas in pressurized irrigation system for example, in case of micro irrigation or drip irrigation you need to pressurize the irrigation so that the water can penetrate to the, the smaller pores uh, which is uh, in the dripper or you, you, you can say the sprinklers. Okay, you need the pressure for that and to understand the ground water hydraulics. So, this is important to understand how water flows uh, from uh, you know the uh, surface to the drains in case of drainage and to design surface and subsurface drainage systems. So, once you understand the governing equations and the principles, so you will be able to design surface and subsurface drainage systems and to familiar with some irrigation drainage models. So, there are models available to uh, simulate irrigation and drainage uh, cases. So, we are going to discuss about those and to know about water lifting devices and pumps. So, you have water underground, so how to tap the water using uh, uh, the pumps. So, that we are going to uh, learn in this. And the reference books, uh, there are several reference books available, but mostly we will be focusing on, uh, on uh, I mean see so this irrigation theory and practice uh, by A. M. Michael and then uh, land drainage which is by uh, Bhattacharya and Michael and there are other foreign uh, editions you can go through. So, uh, in order to you know understand the principles. Yeah, this uh, sustainable development. So, if you are coming into the introduction, so uh, the efficient management of water is challenging in India because the water table is getting declining day by day. Uh, due to the over exploitation of water for drinking and irrigation purposes. So, that really burdens a farmer to tap water from the deeper you know uh, aquifers. So, and also uh, incomplete or major and medium irrigation projects. So, the many projects are uh, you know under construction or even the pending projects. So, because of the you know, political or you know financial status so they are not able to you know finish in time so and very slow increase in gross irrigated area so in 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 every budget so in the government budget you are providing a lot of you know uh, funds for irrigation but the the thing is the amount of funds you are pouring in irrigation it's not helping in increasing the uh, gross irrigated area and then uh, the quality of water in rivers and lakes are really degrading day by day and increasing water conflicts. So, it is not only within India and across the uh, I mean the country, countries like our neighboring countries for example, uh, India and Pakistan, India and uh, 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 Nepal, India and Bangladesh. So, you have a lot of water conflicts and within India for example, uh, Tamil Nadu and uh, Karnataka, uh, Maharashtra and Andhra. So, they are uh, now Telangana. So, the conflicts are increasing. So, because of this, so the water management is really challenging in India. Then uh, though India has 16 percent of the world's population, but has only 4 percent of the total available fresh water. If you see this table, so we have uh, like uh, the annual precipitation we receive from uh, rainfall including snowfall. So, around 4000 kilometer cube, but uh, uh, the average annual potential flow in rivers, so it is only 50 percent, almost 50 percent of that and utilizable water resources could be 28 percent of annual precipitation and surface and uh, ground water is kind of you know uh, like uh, 70 percent. If you see the uh, water availability or water resources in India. So, we are receiving the annual precipitation about 4000 kilometer cube, uh, the average potential flow uh, in rivers is almost uh, 50 percent, uh, whereas the estimated you know utilizable water resources. So, that is about 28 percent is of uh, annual precipitation uh, volume and the utilizable is classified as surface and ground water resources. So, the surface water resources are around 60 percent uh, and whereas, ground water about 40 percent something like that and uh, where is it? Okay.
Okay. The, the next is the per capita water availability in India. So, this table shows uh, the per capita water availability which is declining, uh, uh, but uh, with uh, increasing population. So, but uh, if you see this as per the international norms uh, per capita water availability if it is less than uh, I mean if it is less than 17,000 meter cube per year per capita the country is under water stressed. If it is less than uh, 1000 meter cube per year, the country is water scarce. So, if you see these numbers, we are going to hit uh, the water stressed condition and in future the water scarce uh, condition very soon. And the irrigation potential of water, so the total geographical area of India is 329 million hectares and the, the net zone area 141 million hectares which is 43 percent is of 329 million hectares. So, this is uh, what uh, the net zone area. So, uh, and then the gross irrigation area. So, that is uh, 87.23 uh, million hectares and the net irrigated area 62.31 million hectares. So, the, so the gross irrigated area, so net irrigated area the difference is, so in case of gross irrigated area, so you will be counting the crop which is grown you know repeatedly in a particular year. So, and uh, the productivity which is uh, under irrigated condition 2.5 ton per hectare and whereas in rain fed condition 0.5 ton per hectare, so which is uh, very low compared to the irrigated condition. So, you can understand the irrigation potential here. So, uh, and, and, and the importance of irrigation is and the fruit grain availability if you see around 523 gram per capita per day available uh, these days. So, the productivity of cereals in India if you see this the rice uh, is consuming you know uh, 50, uh, almost uh, double the water required uh, for other crops around 120 centimeter. Whereas, look at the yield, so yields are pretty much same, uh, but the water productivity definitely will be less in case of rice because it is consuming a lot of uh, water. So, the irrigation here, what is exactly the irrigation? Irrigation is artificial application of water to the plant, uh, to the soil in order to uh, grow the crop profitably. Okay. So, and then uh, irrigation water generally applied when there is no uh, rainfall or ground water sources. And the main concerns in irrigation is when to apply, how much to apply and uh, how to apply. So, these three things are very important when you decide or when you schedule an irrigation to a plant. So, the benefits of irrigation that includes, so irrigation uh, development has played a key role. Uh, in first of all the strengthening economy because irrigation means what? Uh, I mean you are uh, applying water for benefit of the crop. So, you are in, indirectly you are I mean directly you are producing the crop. So, that will influence the economy. So, if you have more grains produced and will more profits and the it strengthens the economy. And then uh, increasing employment opportunities. So, when the crop production is more it definitely drives the you know rural youth into the uh, into the agro business and definitely the employment opportunity will increase. And the self sufficiency in food production if you see um, the food production if, if you have a lot of water and there will be a lot of food production. So, so that the sufficiency food will be uh, attained. And the other benefits uh, could be like uh, raise of a crop where nothing would grow otherwise. So, if suppose if you have a lot of water you can grow in deserts, okay, grow, grow crop in even deserts. So, and they grow a more profitable crop. Suppose uh, if you are comparing the alfalfa which is a fodder crop, you put lot of water for fodder crop. So, instead of that the water the same water can be used to grow a profitable crop like uh, wheat and increase the yield uh, and our quality of given crop. So, so definitely you are not making any water stressed condition and the quality of crop will improve, improve and, and also the, the produce will improve. So, uh, increase the aesthetic value of the landscape. So, you have a lot of water then you can use it for landscaping 
and, and also the greenery other greenery purpose so that the landscape will be green and uh, definitely that improves the aesthetic value. So, and then other benefits will be the leaching of salts. So, if you have problem with salts in soil you, you, and you have a lot of water then you can you know use the water to leach out the salts into the soil. And wind erosion can be controlled by applying you know uh, water on top. So, that will make the ground wet and wind cannot blow the soil particles and multiple cropping during an year. So, if you and you can grow like uh, not, not single crop you can go like uh, three crops or two crops in a year and provides jobs you already discussed and reduce the risk of crop failures. So, because you are not you know making uh, crops under water stress condition definitely that will improve the crop condition and and uh, the no risk of crop failures or uh, improve the socio-economic conditions. So, definitely that will help the rural population in income generation and uh, increase the socio-economic condition. So, disadvantages of irrigation if you have you know a lot of water and excess irrigation. So, it is going to decrease the crop yield because so like if, if, if you put lot of water what happened. Uh, the, the, the crop roots will be under wet condition always and, uh, and uh, the water which is on standing on the surface will act as a barrier and it cannot uh, you know help, help out any oxygen which is on this surface go into the soil and thereby uh, definitely the crop uh, yield is going to reduce because the roots require the oxygen. So, if you are not you know if you are making oxygen stress condition definitely the crop yield is going to decrease and the leaching transport of chemicals. So, the, leach, uh, the salts or any other chemicals can be uh, leached into the uh, ground water or transport into the surface waters. For example, uh, you have sorry for, for example, you have uh, pesticides or fertilizers. So, yield reduction uh, can be happened if you have a deficit irrigation. So, not only excess irrigation even if you reduce the irrigation. So, that is called deficit irrigation and the yield definitely is going to reduce and then water logging and salinity could be a problem. So, for example, here if you see the field. Uh, so, the water is really ponding on the surface so not allowing any you know oxygen enter into the soil it is not, it's not aerated condition. So, it is not favorable to the plants. And uh, if you see this uh, image, uh, Indian image, so the groundwater withdrawal as percentage of recharge. So, the mostly the Punjab, Haryana, Delhi and Rajasthan, they withdraw groundwater more than the recharge. So, it really it is uh, uh, alarming situation and the groundwater tables are really depleting uh, deeper, deeper into the uh, soil. So, the types of irrigation projects if you see in India, so they are classified into three major classes. One is the major uh, irrigation projects. So, if the irrigation potential is greater than 10,000 hectares and then uh, cost of project is more than 5 crore road. So, then you can say that the project is like a major irrigation project. And uh, in the case of medium irrigation project, the irrigation potential is about 2000 to 10,000 hectares. So, that is irrigation potential. And the cost of project uh, will be like 25 to 50 lakhs. Uh, and the mine irrigation projects, which will have uh, the irrigation potential less than uh, 2000 hectares, and the cost of project, which will be uh, less than 25 lakhs. So, the surface irrigation systems, if you see, for example, uh, if you have uh, you know furrow irrigation, border irrigation, basin irrigation, all are called surface irrigation systems. If you see the status of surface irrigation systems in, in India, so the water use for a gross irrigated area of 87 million hectare is 541 kilometer cube uh, under surface irrigation systems. So, and the gross water use if you see the water amount of water which is applying on uh, top of the surface. So, that is 1.45 meter in case of surface irrigation which is greater than the United States uh, I mean where, where the United States the practice uh, on the surface irrigation which is 0.9 meter. So, we are putting lot of water on top of the surface uh, compared to the United States uh, in case of surface irrigation systems. So, the overall irrigation efficiency in the country is 38 percent. So, that means 100 
mm you are supplying to the field only 30, 38 mm of water is being taken into the uh, by this plant or, or by the farm. And uh, if you see uh, the uh, I mean other river basins like Krishna, Godavari, Kaveri and Mahanadi systems have very low uh, uh, efficiency of around 27 percent whereas, Indus Ganga systems are doing better than the, uh, the Krishna, Godavari, Kaveri and the efficiency is improved like 43 to 47 percent because they have well structured water release systems called uh, Warabandi for example. So, the pressure in case of pressurized irrigation systems uh, like uh, drip irrigation and sprinkler irrigation systems. So, drip irrigation saves 25 to 60 percentage of uh, water and increased yield up to 60 percentage. Uh, whereas, sprinkler uh, irrigation saves 25 to 33 percentage of water. So, the net irrigation under drip irrigation is 0.5 million hectares and the sprinkler is 0.7 million hectares though we, we have target of about 10 percentage of you know grass irrigated area needs to be under uh, uh, brought under you know uh, micro irrigation or pressurized irrigation systems. So, the Maharashtra is being the largest uh, uh, I mean uh, micro irrigation micro irrigation uh, systems practice state. Uh, uh, so, this is ok and then uh, and then reasons for low irrigation efficiency. So, if you see this irrigation efficiency in surface irrigation, uh, it is about you know 30 to 40 percent, but uh, why, wh what is really causing the uh, low irrigation efficiency? If you see, so the mostly the unlined canal system with excessive seepage. So, canal systems we have it is mostly unlined. So, the water which is being uh, delivered from the canal to field level is being lost through seepage or evaporation mostly. So, then lack of field channels, so the channel, so you have uh, very uh, you know uh, properly designed field channels required for uh, uh, delivering water efficiently to the uh, fields. And the lack of canal communication network, you do not have canal communication network and you, you do not know when to you know release water for the particular uh, you know the area or command area. So, if you do not have proper communication definitely uh, the, the scheduling will be you know faster or slower or, or one day early or one day you know delay can be happened. So, that we really causing the low irrigation efficiency and the lack of field drainage this is another important thing is. So, the excess water you are taking out or the excess water which is accumulating on the surface needs to be you know taken out from the fields for that the field drain drainage is required. So, that is really lack and improper field leveling this is also very important in order to you know uh, increase the uniformity of uniformity distribution of the water. And uh, the price of water right now is to know or you know very less. So, this needs to be improved in this case. So, some of the irrigation terminologies if you see the gross command area. So, there is a total area that includes uh, roads, farmsteads, the lying between drainage boundaries which can be irrigated by canal system. So, if you have like a like a boundary uh, suppose you so you, you have the water uh, state like this is uh, uh, drainage boundaries for example, these are the two drainage boundaries and you can have this area you know uh, something roads or you, you have some trees. So, everything. So, you have some farmsteads. Okay. So, this is called the gross command area, but if you are only con I mean accounting you are only accounting. So, the farm lands. So, that is culturable command area. So, this is for culturable command area. So, the gross command area. So, contains uh, both. So, this is culturable <coughs> command area and uh, the other area which is not culturable. So, it is called unculturable command area. So, this uh, sum of these two uh, will be the gross command uh, area. So, as I said the culturable command area this includes uh, I mean gross command area without unculturable command area such as unfertile barren land, alkaline soil, local ponds, villages, other areas such as habitations. Okay. So,
So, then uh, the intensity of irrigation. So, this is the ratio of irrigated to irrigable or irrigable area. So, you have some area available uh, for irrigation, but based on your water availability, water resources. So, you decided to irrigate part of that land and uh, so that ratio, the ratio of uh, irrigated land to irrigable land will give the intensity of irrigation. And water tanks are really dug areas which can be useful to store the excess rain water. And outlets are kind of you know uh, head regulators at the field level to deliver water to the uh, uh, you know fields, real fields. And water logged areas, and this is an agriculture land, is said to be water logged when productivity of fertile uh, or fertility is affected by high water table. So, in this case, what happens? Water table rises up. So, always you can see the water on the surface. And the field capacity, it is the water content held in the soil after excess water uh, has drained, and plants can extract sufficient water from the soil for its plant growth. So, if you, if you see uh, uh, when there is a rainfall, heavy rainfall, uh, there will be a lot of water which is standing on the surface and but if you go on the next day morning, the water will be uh, receding slowly and you, you may not be seeing the water on the, on the surface. So, where the water has gone, the, one, the water has gone, uh, escaped through you know an overland flow or through depercolation. So, the water, but still the soil contains some water. So, the amount of water which is available uh, during that time uh, or after one or two days of heavy rainfall is called the field capacity. So, and then the permanent wilting point, uh, the wilting coefficient or the permanent wilting point. So, that water content at which plants can no longer extract sufficient water from the soil for its plant growth. So, here, so uh, at this, uh, the, the water which is available in the, in the soil particles. So, uh, soil which is not uh, extracted by this plant. So, then the plants show wilting nature okay. and this we will discuss more on this in the uh, upcoming lectures. And the crop ratio, the crop ratio generally, so we have two crop seasons here, uh, Karif and Rabi season. So, the crop ratio could be, so we are uh, I mean tracking the whole year. Uh, so, the, the cultivable area under different crops during different seasons in a crop year is called the crop ratio. For example, you are cultivating rice in Karif and Rabi. So, the ratio of culturable area during Rabi and uh, Karif will give the crop ratio. And the crop period, so the number of days between sowing to the harvesting of crop is crop period and base period is the period of uh, uh, I mean water application or, or the first watering to the last watering or before harvesting. And the life storage, dead storage uh, and then uh, uh, grass storage. So, these three terminologies belong to the uh, you know you have uh, uh, the reservoirs. Okay. So, life storage is complete is water complete water stored in the reservoir between full uh, reservoir level and dead storage level. So, this water is really available uh, for you know usage as dead storage whereas, the stored reservoir between the lowest supply level to the deep deepest river bed uh, level this, which is 10 percent of uh, uh, GS or uh, grass storage. So, whereas, the grass storage is the storage capacity between full water reservoir level and deepest reservoir level. So, if you see this, the grass uh, storage which is equal to uh, you know live storage plus dead storage, whereas, if you are considering the uh, 10 percent, uh, 10 percent of G s. So, you have 0 0.1 G s, so which is equal to, so G s which is equal to L s plus uh, 0.1 G s. So, if you take the G s out, then you get 0.9 G s equal to L s and G s is equal to L s by 0.9. So, this is the way we, we got this question. Okay. So, uh, so, next is the delta. So, what is the delta? So, delta is the total depth of irrigation water required by a crop during the cropping period. Here we are talking about the base period. Okay. So, 
So, that is the first water application to the last water application before harvesting. So, this is the total depth of water you are providing to the crop during the base period. So, suppose if a crop required about 12 irrigations okay, of 10 centimeter depth. So, uh, then uh, so 12 irrigations 10 centimeter depth. So, that gives a 12 multiplied by 10 centimeter. So, that will give 120 centimeter of uh, uh, depth of water you provided during the uh, base period. So, this is called delta. So, 120 centimeter or 1.2 meter is the delta. Okay, so, and then suppose if the area under the crop is a hectare, the total water required would be 1.2 multiplied by area over the period of 120 days. So, this is a simple calculation you see. And then the other terminology is called a duty. So, which is a hectare per cubic cubic, so cubic meter per second. So, the amount of the volume of water you are utilizing uh, or the area you irrigated for unit volume of water. So, that is that is called uh, duty. So, it is a ratio between the irrigated crop area and the quantity of irrigation water required during the base period. So, the definition is clear. Suppose if you have uh, suppose if you have 3 uh, cubic of irrigation water which is required for crop zone over an area of 1500 hectares. So, the duty, so this is this is what this is the volume of water. So, you are using right. So, and then this is the area and the duty will be the area divided by the volume you are using. So, that will be 1700 uh, hectare cumac and 3 cumac uh, discharge would be required throughout the base period. So, do not forget this. So, we are targeting the base period whatever we are uh, using. So, the 3 cumac per so you are continuously supplying during the base period. Okay. So, the value of duty uh, be different at the head of the water course or at the head of the distributor. So, the, this, this is because there will be a lot of losses if you consider. So, relationship between duty and delta if you see. So, the delta uh, is equal to 8.64 B divided by D. So, how do you get that? So, duty generally the, the, the duty is equal to hectare divided by Q max that is a Q cubic meter per uh, second. So, hectares is a 10 power 4 meter square uh, and uh, cubic meter uh, suppose this is cubic meter into second. Okay. So, the 10 power 4 meter square per meter cube uh, multiplied by you can convert that in days. So, that will be uh, 8.64 into 10 power minus 4 that is days. So, you get like you know uh, this is uh, uh, 10 power 10 power gets cancelled out and meter square meter square this is uh, meter. So, 8.64 into base period like so this base period and meters this is delta. So, that is D. So, you finally, you get delta is equal to 8.64 B by D. So, this is so this is D. Okay. Yeah, so these these are the units you can. So example, if you see here, suppose if you have an uh, if you have an irrigation canal which has uh, GCA, which is grass uh, command area, that is eighty thousand hectares, out of which eighty five percent is the culturable. Uh, area. So, that means, you have total area, but only 85 percent is culturable area. The intensity of irrigation for Kharif season is 30 percent. So, out of this culturable area only 30 percent for Ravi season uh, sorry Kharif season for Ravi season is 60 percent okay. and find the discharge required at the head of the canal if the duty, duty is given for the Kharif season and for Ravi season. Okay. So, this is the, the problem. So, since the GCA is given so, how do you solve this basically? So, uh, in order to solve that, 
Cause like. Okay, solution here. So the culturable command area, if you see, eighty thousand uh, multiplied by 0.85 because eighty five percent is a culturable area. So he got culturable year sixty eight thousand hectares, and then uh, area under Karif season. So out of this culturable area, only thirty percent is Karif season. So uh, multiplied by 0.3, you get twenty thousand four hundred hectares. This is irrigated. This is during Karif season. Similarly, for Rabi season. You get forty thousand and eight hundred hectares. So, water required at the head of the canal to irrigate during uh, Kharif season is so area divided by Q. I mean uh, the Q mac. So, area divided by Q mac. So, you get uh, twenty-five point five Q max. Okay. And then uh, uh, Rabi season, you get uh, uh, twenty forty thousand uh, forty thousand eight hundred divided by 1700 cumex so that will be 24 into cumex so if you see this so this one so this number so how do you get this so this is uh, area okay divided by so duty is given so area divided by duty so duty so that will give area in hectares divided by duty so that will be in uh, uh, hectares divided by cumex Right, so then you get Q max. Okay, so that's what you got. Fine. So, so how to decide which one really you want to go with, like twenty five point five Q max or twenty four Q max? So, so general thumb rule is you always go with uh, higher, you know, uh, the the discharge so that it can serve both Rabi and Karif uh, seasons. Uh, where is example two? The watercourse has a culturable command area, twenty uh, two thousand six hundred hectares, out of which the intensities of irrigation uh, for perennial sugarcane and rice crops are twenty percent, forty percent respectively. Okay, so here the intensity of irrigation is given. So intensity of irrigation, so that means so you have a uh, irrigable area, but only part of that is irrigated. For example, here twenty percent. For uh, sugarcane and 40% for rice crop, respectively. Okay, the duty of these crops at the head of the water course is 750 hectare per cumex. This is duty is given for both cases, and find the discharge required at the head water course if the peak demand is 20% higher than the average water requirement. So it's similar to the previous example. Uh, if you see this. Uh, Okay, the solution here, if you see area under sugarcane, so let's say, so you have 2600 hectares, but 20 percent is uh, you know uh, irrigable land, uh, sorry, uh, irrigated land. So that is 550 hectares under sugarcane, and similarly under rice, uh, 40 percent, so that's uh, 1040 hectares. And water required for sugarcane will be. So, 500 hectares divided by duty, you get uh, you know say 0.694 cumex, and similarly for rice, 0 0.577 cumex. And so, if you see this, since sugarcane is perennial crop, so that means you need to supply water throughout the year, and rice requires you know one season. So, here, uh, I mean, what is the decision? Like, uh, uh, I mean. What water you need to provide? So since sugarcane is perennial crop, so you need to sum up these like sugarcane uh, as well as uh, I mean rice rice crop. The water required for sugarcane and rice can be combined, and you will have the maximum water which is required. Uh, but the total discharge during the year is 1.271 cumex. Okay. Hence, the peak uh, design discharge. If you see this, uh, twenty percent higher than. So you can uh, put like twenty percent, hundred, uh, one twenty percent now. So that is one point two. So that will be one point uh, five two. Okay. So thank you for this uh, lecture. This is the first lecture, and we are going to cover uh, more on the the following lectures. Uh, so thank you.